What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the Each Adventure channel. My name is Josh. And uh, yeah. So we're out riding the TT250 today. I'm on my way to work. And uh, there's two reasons for this video. Number one is because I found a cool little new trail that I can kind of sort of take when I go to work. And this is it right here. Now, unfortunately, I'm pretty sure I am not supposed to be over here. Uh, there is a gate, and I believe it says no trespassing. But it does lead to a spot where there is no gate and no signs, and that's what I'm sticking to. So it's kind of a fun little, uh, oh, kind of a fun little, woo, wrong gear. <laughs> kind of a fun little, a little section of dirt that I can hit in the morning on my way to work because the rest is pretty much highway and pavement. But man, I wish I could just ride to work in the dirt all the time. I do have that option through the mountain, but uh, that is um, not always feasible. It does take about 40 minutes or so longer to go that way. So we will go this way. And likewise, I believe this part is also a horse trail. Uh, but usually I would hit this section on my way home, but I just discovered that little section I was just on, which is uh, pretty sweet. So I think it's short enough where I can avoid getting in any kind of real trouble. And I uh, still have some fun. So uh, that is reason number one for this video. But uh, reason number two, it brings me great sadness. Um, I had seen, maybe about two days ago, a video from Chronicles of Solid, and he was talking about how the Yamaha WR250R is being discontinued. And at first, when I saw the video, I was like, all right, like, the dude lives in another country, so maybe here in the US it is different. But then I started seeing posts on Instagram and other things across the internet. Somewhere deep down in my heart, I was hoping that it wasn't true. Um, but then I went to the Yamaha website, and if you click on their dual sport bikes and look at their 2018 lineup, the WR250R is definitely missing. So, uh, wow, that is, uh, that sucks. <laughs> Um, I'm a Yamaha guy at heart. Uh, my first bike was a Yamaha YZ250. My second bike was a Yamaha TTR230. And then I've also owned an XT250 and then another TTR230. So I love Yamahas. If it were up to me when I bought the CRF250L, if that and the WR250R had been priced more competitively, uh, that would be the bike that I own. Performance-wise, it's just a better bike. Uh, they're both 250s, but the WR250R definitely has uh, what the uh, CRF250L is lacking. It's much more, much more capable in the dirt due to its weight and suspension. You know, six-speed transmission, aluminum frame, all that stuff just adds to what's essentially a premium bike in the 250cc class. I don't know Yamaha's sales numbers. Um, I'm just kind of going off what I heard on the Chronicles of Solid video and uh, from my own experiences with my CRF250L and XT250. According to Chronicles of Solid, uh, apparently Yamaha doesn't sell those very well. And you really got to think about it. I mean, I, I don't remember exactly what year the WR250R was introduced. I believe it was 2008. So I mean, it's it's a relatively modern 250 dual sport. If you look at all the other dual sports out there, really the only competition that's been introduced that's uh, not you know 30 years old is uh, the XT250, which also first debuted in 2008, and the CRF250L, which debuted in 2013. So all these bikes from a dual sport standpoint are relatively modern when you compare them to like a KLR650 or a DR650. So I mean the WR250R by today's standards is relatively modern. Uh, but if you look back and you kind of think of when it was introduced, 
And think of how much has changed uh, in the motorcycling world over the last, I don't know, 10 years. It's really in a class of its own in terms of performance and price. There's no other 250 that gives you that kind of performance, uh, which is awesome. But that performance also comes with a premium price tag. You know, looking at the CRF250L and the WR250R, if you don't really know anything about dual sports or you're just looking to get into the sport, most people that buy 250s are beginners. Usually, number one, because it's cheap, and number two, because they're lightweight and typically easier to manage, uh, both on the road and on the dirt. You know, but at almost a $2,000 premium, I can see where a lot of those sales probably went to the CRF250L, because uh, that's where mine went. And had I known the performance difference back then, um, I would have definitely gone for the WR250R. But if you look where the WR250R is priced and you start comparing that to a lot of the European bikes, it's hard to justify the WR250R where you get arguably more performance with, uh, with like a KTM, a Beta, or a Husqvarna. And times are just different now. I mean, those, those three Euro bikes, they were not commonplace. Like, you didn't see very many of them back then. And, uh, you know, times have changed, especially here in Southern California where, you know, the mindset is, is definitely on the more power side of things. You know, it's a philosophy that I don't necessarily agree with, but uh, that's just the way it is. And, you know, when you start looking at a price difference, it's okay, well, I'm going to spend $7,000 on a Yamaha 250 when I can spend 10000 on a KTM 500. You know, a lot of people are just you know they're just gonna they're just gonna pay that difference so it's sad because I was you know I was considering maybe getting a WR250R um, but I probably was gonna buy it used so if that ever ends up being something that I do uh, that's gonna be my only option now the big question is now is uh, what Yamaha's gonna do again in the Chronicles of Solid video he was kind of talking about how you know maybe they'll come out with like a WR250L or something something like something that kind of fits the, the entry-level market a little bit better. I kind of pointed out that the XT250 uh, really fills that space pretty well. It doesn't make sense to me for them to put kind of an entry-level entry level dual sport bike uh, when they already have one. And the XT250 is a fantastic motorcycle. I had one and I loved it. I'm gonna go on the record and say that I feel for, for my needs anyways, that it is a better fit for me and was a better bike for me than the CRF250L. And the fact that that's still in the lineup, I'm, I'm thinking that's probably what they're doing. And what I hope for is something like a WR450R. That would be that would be sweet. That's what a lot of people want. It'd be nice to see something modern to kind of comp compete with the Euro bikes. It would also be cool to see another adventure bike, something along the lines of the Tenere. You know, we don't we don't have that option here in the U.S. So, like a mini a mini Tenere. We have the Super Tenere, but we we do not have the regular 600 CC one. You know, 400, 500 cc adventure bike from Yamaha would be pretty sweet. I do also know that they have the T7 coming out, so I'm hoping that's not the reason for dropping the WR250R because those are very, very different bikes. But yeah, it's a, it's an interesting time. Another thought that I have is I love Yamaha and everything. I love their bikes. Uh, I love their musical instruments, and uh, I love their boats. They make freaking awesome boats. What I'm hoping is what they did with a Yamaha AR210, which is kind of like their mid-level jet boat, is uh, drop it for a year and then come back with a kind of redesigned higher performance one. I don't know if that's what's going to happen. I don't know why I'm waiting here. Yeah, so I don't know if that's what's going to happen. It'd be cool, but I wouldn't like to I wouldn't want to see it come back as a 250 with a higher price point. That to me would not make any sense, but you know, I'm not Yamaha, so I don't know what they're doing, but uh, I hope Yamaha really, really comes through and, and puts out something that'll kind of meet the needs of what people have been wanting for a while, which is a slightly higher performance, higher displacement dual sport bike. You gotta love this SoCal traffic. Hmm. How am I gonna get through to the other side? I need to get over right here. Right here. Boom. There we go. There we go. Do, 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 do. There. A lot of 
traffic for a Friday. It's one of those things you get, you just have to freaking accept in SoCal. It's uh, always traffic all the time. So anyways, that's all I got for today. Um, I have a lot of videos coming up. I'm gonna try to, maybe, I don't know if it's possible, but I'm gonna try to do two a week. Cause I got a lot of footage to get through and I just, I feel so behind. Like I feel like, uh, I feel very disconnected from you guys when uh, I'm putting out videos that I shot months ago. I'm gonna try to just supplement those videos with stuff that's more relevant and more recent, which is uh, partially the reason for this video, because if I had put out a video three months from now talking about the WR250R, you guys would be like, dude, that's old news. So I'm gonna try. I don't, I don't know if it's gonna happen. There might be a week where I only do one, and then another week where I do two. It just depends on my time and all that stuff, so uh, we shall see. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like down below, and if you're new here, please subscribe. I apologize this isn't as adventure as some of my other stuff, but uh, hopefully that little trail in the beginning of the video will hold you guys over till the next one. And that next video, I promise, will uh, it won't be that long because I'm almost done with it. So anyways, like I said, have fun, take care, ride safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, make sure you get out there and have adventures of your own, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> Later.